In the previous video, we ran the site calculator on our project and confirmed that indeed we can put 10 lots on our subdivision. So now let's go ahead and create them. First, I'm going to switch over to my lots layer so that these new lots are going to be created on that layer instead of roads. Now to create the lots, we're going to use a routine called subdivide tract by parts. However, this routine, again, only works on tract objects. So first we must create a new tract, which will represent our buildable area. So we'll start the tract command and then trace around the area here where our lots will be. So I'll start up here and just go all the way around. And I'll close out. Now, when we create the actual lots, the routine is going to ask us to supply the bearing of the line to use for the side lot lines. That'll be the lines that come down here. I want these lot lines to be nice and perpendicular to our right of way. So to figure that out, I'm going to use the measure command. And I'll start at the top boundary and then use my perpendicular snap to lock onto that right of way line. And there we can see that direction is a bearing of south, zero degrees, nine minutes, 19 seconds west. So I'll write that down. And now we're ready for the subdivide command. Now you really don't have to do this, but if you do, it makes your design look nice and tidy. So now let's start the subdivide command. Subdivide attract by parts. We're gonna try the routine on our entire parcel. But in some cases, you may need to break up your project into smaller parcels to make it easier for this routine to do its thing. So first it asks to select the track that we're going to divide up, and that's that one. And now we see an information screen. Also note there's a link up here to watch a short video on this command if you're new to it. So I'll click through that. And now we'll tell it that we want the first option, which is to divide the tract into equal parts. And here it wants to know the number of parts that we want, or lots, which is 10. On this screen, we're telling it that we want to create the lots from left to right. And here it wants to know the bearing to use for the new lot lines that will be created. We want them perpendicular to the right-of-way line. And moments ago, I measured what that bearing would be and it's south, zero degrees, nine minutes, 19 seconds west. Next, the routine is asking if we want it to automatically name the new lots, such as lot one, lot two, etc. And I'm just going to leave that blank and name them myself later. And now we can review a summary of what we're going to do and then click finish. Now, as you can imagine, there are some fairly complex calculations going on here. It did, in fact, create 10 lots, and they are all the correct size, but it was not able to wrap around the cul-de-sac like we would want it to. We'll need to fix that up manually. But first, let's turn on the area for one of these lots and see how we did. The area is 13,238, just like we said. And if I show more decimal places, we can see more precisely that it is 13,237.62. And we'll use that in a little bit, so I'm going to write that down. So back at the cul-de-sac, these two lots are completely incorrect, so I'm just going to delete them. This lot is close, but I would really rather have this lot line here to be radial, or in other words, perpendicular to this arc. I can make this happen with one of the predetermined area commands that are in the software. So I'll go to the Tools menu, select Change Area of a Tract, and use Radial Side Method. It asks me to select the tract that I want to change, and it's this one. And now it wants to know which side of that tract, or which leg, do I want to make radial, and it's this one. So it'll use that leg right there and reposition it to get the correct area. And last, it wants to know the area, and that's the area that I wrote down just a moment ago. It's asking for the value in acres, but I can still enter it in feet. 
by including the foot symbol at the end. So now the program has made that lot line radial. In other words, if you extend it, it will exactly connect to the center point of our cul-de-sac. We need to do the same thing with this lot down here. So again, start the command, radial side method, there, there, and that area. Next, we need to redraw the other two lots over here that we deleted. I'll start the track command and just sort of trace the approximate outline of this top one right here. So I'll start here, there, And understand the program automatically locks on to the things I click. So I'm not being careless there. It'll just do that automatically. And again, we'll use the radial side method to make this what we want. And now for this last tract, if we've done everything correctly, it should be the correct size anyway. So we'll start that and then trace. Now let's see if it's accurate. Pretty darn accurate. It missed it by two hundredths of a square foot. Let's check this one. That one's correct. In fact, they're all exactly the same size, except for this lot right here, which is only two hundredths of a square foot different. And what's more, all of our internal lot lines are perfectly perpendicular to the right-of-way boundary lines. In the next video, I'll add some dimensions, setback lines, and also create the actual roadway.